Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Yes, praise God is right. Good morning, live streaming there on Facebook. So glad everyone can join us. Just wanted to highlight a few announcements since I've got you on Facebook Live. If you guys need a bulletin, hop on over to our website at www.ccf-va.org. And there's listening guides on there so you can follow along with Pastor Nick. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few things that we have going on here. We are spaced out. We would love to have you here at church. If you want to help the church out, like maybe during the week, do some chores, we still have things available to help around the church. We have a little box in the back of the sanctuary called Keep CCF Beautiful. And there's some easy chores like changing light bulbs and fun stuff like that, like organizing the kitchen. Um, so if you ever want to help out, just pop on by. Pastor Nick or I will be able to point you in that direction. At the end of the month, which is coming very, very fast, we have our women's book club. We are meeting at Shelby's home. Um, even if you haven't read the book, Please join us. If you have any questions, see me or send me an email. My email address is ebaden at ccf-va.org. So we're just getting ready. We, uh, Amy Lopez is our new children's ministry director. She's getting very excited and getting everything organized to have our kids. They'll be coming back the week after Labor Day. So we're so excited and we're so glad you all are here joining us live on Facebook and here in person at CCF. So we're just going to worship together. So please stand. <laughs> another Sunday. Amen. We can clap our hands for Jesus, can't we?
I tell you, the times we're living in, you got to have faith, amen? amen. And we got to have his faith. Can't do it without him. Love this praise team. Love you all. Look at this. There's so many people in the sanctuary. Amen. You're answering our prayers, Lord. Amen. that on my husband's tombstone. See, I, we kill each other, and I'll kill him off first. But <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to put the praise God, because he always says, praise God. He was known for that at our other church that we were at for 18 years. So that will be yours on your tombstone, my love, and mine will be every day's a gift, no guarantees of tomorrow. Amen? <laughs>
I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern. And I don't want to gain this world and lose what matters. And so I'm giving up everything because I want to be different. I want to be changed till all of me is gone. And all that Beautiful. You can have a seat. Thank you so much for being here today. Came here to tell the Lord that we love him, show him, and get into his word. Father, I pray right now, Lord, as we just look into your word and dig into it, that your Holy Spirit will make it, reveal it to us in a new way, in a mighty way, Lord. Just like in the 4th of July when those fireworks go off, Father, that's what we want here. Fireworks of your love and your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness spreading out. Uh, all over this congregation, Father, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name, amen. We're in a series right now uh, talking about the reckoning, and today is about building or stumbling, and I wanted to start back in uh, at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelations, because the Lord told John to talk to the angel of seven different churches, and the last church that he talked to was Laodicea, and he kind of laid it out, and he says, in Revelation 3, 15 through 17, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Isn't that a great way to start a message? Praise God. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. In verse 17, because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have no need of nothing and you do not know that you are, and this was a heavy word for that church. You did not know that you are wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. That's what they, the Lord told John to write to the angel of the church at Laodicea. So the church at Laodicea, from what I understand, they were neither cold nor hot. They were neither cold, which cold to me would be openly rejecting Christ and not wanting anything to do with him or hot, filled with spiritual zeal. But instead, I feel like its members of the church at Laodicea were lukewarm, meaning they were hypocrites professing to know Christ but not truly belonging to him. So the people at the church of Laodicea, they were not building their faith. And that's what this message is about. So I see when, if you're not building your faith, you're really stumbling. There's really only two ways to go. And stumbling meaning falling, faltering. Uh, I wrote down reeling. You could also use the word awkward, maybe uncomfortable, clumsy, clumsy embarrassing. And check out what Jesus said in Matthew 7 on the Sermon on the Mount. He's, you know teaching and preaching to all these people and he says not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven what a way to start out but he who does the will of my father who is heaven will enter many of you will say to me on that day lord lord but did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness. 
And I put that there because you hear that word a lot today, lawlessness. In the commentary concerning that, verse 21, it says, The barrenness of this sort of faith demonstrated its real character. The faith that says but does not do is really unbelief. Jesus was not suggesting that uh, through this Sermon on the Mount that works are commendable for salvation because they're not. But true faith will not fail to produce the fruit of good works. And I thought to myself, because I'm getting ready to wind down this thing called pastorate, and I've always known that my calling or my passion or my goal or my desire was to learn the Word of God. That was number one on my list. And number two was love my wife like Christ loved the church. And so... I wanted to learn the Word of God. I wanted to know it. I wanted to live it out. And then I wanted to be prepared to teach the Word of God. So what do you mean by preparation, Pastor Nick, when you say, what does it look like you to prepare for a message? And I wrote this down. First is listening. You got to be listening. You got to be studying. You got to be meditating. You got to be correlating. I talked about correlating last week. You got to be watching. And I can't tell you how many times through the years, through the work weeks, mostly it happens on Sunday morning when we'll be in prayer or in our community group and somebody will say something that has totally to do with what I'm going to speak about when I get out here. And it just blows me away. I don't know how to put that, but it's just confirmation. You know, they would say something that's matching up. And so in my first bulletin point there, if you choose to build up your faith, he's going to give you confirmation. If you choose to build up your faith, he'll give you confirmation. The dictionary app for con- uh, confirmation is the act of confirming. And confirming means to establish the truth. Isn't that what Christianity is all about? Isn't that what your life is all about? And getting into this word, establishing the truth, accuracy, uh, validity, the genuineness of all acknowledged with a definite assurance that in every message, in every lesson that I need to lay out the facts from God's word and that's why I'm here. No matter what the subject is, you got to lay out the facts from God's word whether you're going to believe it or not because that's your decision. When you walk out here every week, it's your decision whether you're going to believe it or say, well, he's just too old. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And you have to choose to live by it. Building up, if you choose to build up your faith, it involves preparing. And this is my passage today. First First Peter 1, starting at verse 13. We're just going to go through the verses and going to try to explain it to you and give you the facts about it all the way to Chapter 2, verse 12. But verse 13 in Peter, 1 Peter 1, it says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in the spirit. Fix your hope completely. It doesn't say every once in a while or when you feel like it or when things are going good. But fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Remember that day when Christ came in your vi- in your life and he revealed himself to you and all of a sudden you repented of your sins and received him into your heart and you became a Christian. That happened at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And in verse 14 it says, As obedient children, do not conform to the former lusts which were yours when you were in ignorance. Remember when you didn't know God and how you worked and how you talked? Oh, I used to think it was so funny to curse. Oh, man, every other word, laugh. But like the Holy One who called you, Peter says, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior because it is written, you should be holy for I am holy. I saw a statement from Tony Evans. Boy, does it fit today. He says, if you go to the hospital for an operation, you want a doctor to use sterilized equipment and to be in a sterilized environment because you don't want viruses and bacteria getting in the way of your health. Praise God. I can't tell you how many times a day I wash my hands now. It's sad, man. I mean, my skin is it. Praise God. He says, then he goes on and says, sin is a spiritual virus that has no place in a sterile environment of God's holiness. Think about that. 
In verse 17, thank you, John. If you address his father, the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, impartially, meaning fair, meaning uh, just, Peter says, conduct yourselves in fear during this time of your stay on earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold or your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Isn't that beautiful? So stumbling involves no fear or discipline. When when there's no fear in your life of the Lord or there's no discipline in your life, you're going to stumble. I believe the fear of the Lord is two-sided. One side has to do because when I read the fear, you know, fear the Lord, it says that so many times in the Bible, it's talking about your reverence for him, your all for him. But the other thing has to be about worrying that you did something. You have fear because you did something wrong. And that's like, and I want to pause a little bit and talk about parenting here because it's, it's similar. When you think about the fear, it's similar to the dual role the parents have with their children. Not only do they wish for their children to respect them, can I get any amen from parents? But they also want their children to know that their improper behavior could invoke discipline. Wow, powerful. So then I thought about these correlating verses, because I talked about correlating last week. It's it's incredible. That's my middle name now, correlate. means linking, comparing. Uh, connecting, associating one passage to another passage, and it brought me to Ecclesiastes 8, 10 through 13. Check this out. Boy, do we need this in this generation right now. So then I have seen the wicked buried, those who used to go in and out from the holy place, and they're soon forgotten in the city where they did thus. This too is futility. And futility to me means ineffective, uh, pointless, useless, senseless, And then in verse 11, because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed quickly, therefore the hearts of the son of men among them are given fully to do evil. Think about it. I could fix every city in America right now with this verse. Think about it. You always hear about, you know, no justice, no peace. They really should be saying no discipline, no peace. You know what I'm saying? Think about that. No discipline, no peace. It's unbelievable. Verse 12, although a sinner does an evil a hundred times and may lengthen his life, still know that it will be well for those who fear God. It will be well for those who fear God and fear him openly, but it will not be well for the evil man and he will not lengthen his days like a shadow because he does not fear God. Then I read this uh, little story about there was a special on TV. This is incredible. There was a special on TV, and there was a herd of young male elephants just causing havoc. They were running over trees, fighting with each other, creating havoc in their environment, and they were male elephants. We're going to leave the ladies alone. They were male elephants going wild, and the experts were trying to figure out What was happening? Finally, they noticed that there was no adult male elephants in the herd. They were teenage elephants that had lost their natural mind. Have you ever known of a teenager? Now, I don't want any parents knocking necks, but... So in an attempt to fix the problem, the experts flew in a group of male adult elephants and dropped them in the middle of the herd. So when these adult elephants were dropped into the midst of the chaos, they began flapping their ears and they're raising their trunk and making these loud sounds. And I thought to myself, because I left the story and I thought, well, what would they say if they would speak in English and, and they would say, I wish, you know, repent, grow up, stop acting stupid. But the story said, after a few days of flapping their ears, raising their trunks, And making these sounds, the teenage male elephants calmed down. Isn't that great? 
So I put in your listening guide, as long as the teenage male elephants were calling their own shots, you had gangs of elephants that had gone crazy because of the lack of discipline. Am I talking to anybody today? Uh, you, can you see this happening in the cities of this great nation? But when the adult male elephants were dropped in, they flapped their ears, raised their trunks, made sounds, and they demanded order. We've got some teen terrorists today because there's no adult males in their lives. We need a generation of adults male in their lives. We need real men who will flap their ears and raise their trunks and sound out the truth of what a man really is in order to calm down a generation who doesn't know how to act. And it comes back to discipline. And why? Because in essence, a lot of them have really been growing up without an adult male teaching without an adult male loving them, without an adult male leading them in what obedience is and respect is and giving consequences when needed so that the next generation will be prepared to build up their children so that they won't live a life of stumbling but building others up. That's what we need to do in the church and our youth ministry and our children's ministry. Build each other up and teach them the word of God knowing that this is where your hope is. This is where your life is mapped out for you. This is where you know how to love and forgive and be there for each other. Building up involves the heart. I want to go on the first Peter 1, verse 20 through 25, for he was foreknown before the foundation of the world. Notice he's capitalized, Jesus, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you. Think about it. For everybody in here, he appeared in these last times for our sake, for the sake of you who through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope is in God. And that's what messages need to be about during this pandemic. We got faith and hope in God. We're not going to let the pandemic rule us. We're going to let God rule us. We're going to let the word of God rule us. I hope I can get some amens out of that. Since you have obedience to the truth, in verse 22, since you have obedience to the truth, and we have to know where the truth is, where to go for the truth, how to live out the truth, purify your souls for a sincere love of the brethren fervently love one another from the heart. When you walk in here every week, we love you. We're thankful that you're here, and this is, and we're hoping this will be your church home because you've been born again, not with your seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. Then Peter goes on and says, all flesh is like grass. All of its glory like the flower of the grass. And I know we need our grass cut here. That is true. But the grass withers and the flower falls off. But the word of the Lord endures forever. If you could teach your kid anything, teach him that. The word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you, Peter wrote. Now, if you're stumbling, I want to go on to chapter 2 in 1 Peter. If you're stumbling, you must put aside some things. If you're looking at your life right now and examining your life, well, I'm stumbling in this area. I'm not doing what the Lord has called me to do. You need to put aside some things. And Peter lays it out in in the second chapter. Therefore, putting aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, and all slander, like newborn babies long for that pure milk of the word. So why buy it? You may grow. Grow in respect to salvation if you had tasted the kindness of the Lord. Then I thought about C.S. Lewis this week, had a couple statements by him concerning deceit. C.S. Lewis said, nothing can deceive unless it bears a plausible resemblance to reality. Think about it. A plausible means an appearance of truth. You know what I'm saying? C.S. Lewis also said, no one can deceive you unless he makes you think he's telling the truth. Isn't that cool? We're going to see a lot of ads on TV the next couple months. And some of them are going to be true, and some of them are going to be a bunch of malarkey. I don't know how else to say it. Is that a good word? No one can deceive you unless he makes you think 
He's telling the truth. C.S. Lewis said this about hypocrisy, one statement. How difficult is it to avoid having a special standard for oneself? Think about that. Got to think about that. Building, if you want to build up your faith, you must offer spiritual sacrifices, verses 4 and 5. And coming to him, which is all what we need to do, coming to him as a living stone which has been rejected by men, but as choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up into a spiritual house. I call it the church for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So think about this. As Christians, you're going to be rejected by men. I taught last week as followers of Christ, you're going to uh, be I don't know what the word I'm looking for. There's going to be deception. There's going to be temptations. There's going to be tribulations. There's going to be persecution. You're going to be rejected by men. But in the sight of God, you're his child. You're choice. You're precious. He wants you to build up. How do you stumble? Verse Peter 2, 6 through 8, winding down now. For this is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. Do you understand that? That precious stone is Christ. He's the cornerstone. I lay then Zion. He who believes in him will not be disappointed. This precious value, verse 7 says, then is for you who believe, but those who disbelieve the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling. Think about that. Stumbling and a rock of offense. For they stumble. Why? Because they are disobedient to the word. And to this doom they were also appointed. That's the sad part of the other side of it. Of people who reject Christ. They stumble because they're disobedient to the word. And to this doom they were also appointed. My last statement here. Why build as the band comes forward. Verses 9 through 12. Because this is four verses that could change people's lives. And I want to encourage you with these verses because when you walk out of here today, I want you to understand something about knowing Christ and repenting of your sins and becoming a follower of Christ. This is what I want to encourage you with. You are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a people for God's own possession. We belong to him so that you may proclaim the excellency of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do you understand that? That's our job as believers. During this pandemic, during all this turmoil, all this burning and looting and all this stuff that's just a bunch of junk, we're supposed to proclaim the excellencies of him him who called us out of the darkness into the marvelous light because you know why for once you were not a people but now you are the people of God you have not received mercy you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy beloved I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from the fleshly lust that wage war against the soul there's a war going on Keep your behavior excellent among Gentiles so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they'll be calling you evildoers. But we're followers of Christ that they may, because of your good deeds, observe them, glorify God in the day of salvation. Seriously, don't allow this pandemic to rule you. Don't allow this pandemic to fill you with fear. Fear the Lord. Give him your all. Give him your everything father father i thank you for your word today lord i thank you for the band behind us lord who just wants us take us to your throne of mercy lord because that's where we find mercy that's where we find help in times of trouble is at your throne father so thank you for your word lord we want nothing else but to make disciples with your word as our guideline so that you can go out and make disciples father 
Father, I pray for all these teenagers that are here today, Lord, that they will understand as they grow into their years that once you get out of the youth group, well, I've done church and that's it. I'm going to go my own way now. You got to go the way of Christ because you're going to have to make a decision. There's a wide road and a narrow road. And we as believers in Christ have to choose that narrow road. And you'll find out that not as many people choose the narrow road. A lot of people choose the wide road because that's where all the fun is. That's where you think all the fun is, Father. So, Father, I just pray for our teenagers, Lord. I pray for our children. I pray for every one of us here, Lord, that we would understand that you are the way and the truth and the life and that no one gets to the Father except through you. Father, I open up this altar now for those who need prayer, Lord. We want nothing else to be a praying church. Father, we have our uh, baskets in the back on the way out. We don't collect offering anymore. Just give your offering on the way out and give it unto the Lord, knowing that he will bless you. Father, I give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Simplest of all love songs I want to bring to you. So I'll let my words be few. All for you, Jesus. Jesus.
who was stepping up to be our new children's ministry director. So that was really exciting. And I have another exciting announcement. Um, the elders voted and approved our next deacon, which is a deaconess. Everybody, please welcome Shelby to be our new deaconess. She is our first deaconess here at CCF. We're very excited for that. So I just wanted to let you all know it's on the back of the bulletin. Um, but right now I'm stumbling over my words because I got to share something and I don't want to share it. It's about, you know, a woman in women's ministry. This woman comes to the events. She's a pillar in our Bible study. She's a pillar in our book club. She speaks the word of God. She shares her testimony. She shares humor. She shares love. I just want to let you know that Phyllis will be moving at the end of this week. God is just directing her paths to Kentucky, right? To Kentucky. So if anybody wants to go on a road trip, let me know. Um, She's also an amazing baker. I mean, just, I, just, I just love you. You know, you are like my grandma who passed away, and she sent you here. And I hate crying because I'm not a crier, but I know we will feel a vacancy when you leave, but I know you're going to continue to spread God's love no matter what you do. And I can speak from our women's book club, our women's ministry, our Bible study, that we love you, Phyllis. So please be praying for Phyllis. Um, we're still going to do book club. Maybe we'll Zoom call her in because, you know, there might be a Ron in the book. So you got to come to book club to get that joke. So um, anyway, so be praying for her. Um, so we're going to open this time up. We're not on Facebook Live. This is private time where we can share with our church family that's here. It's 